All right, what is going on, friends? Sean Don coming back with a technical analysis. Here we have Evan Brooks. Recently did another technical analysis on him. I think it was literally just last week. So um, his father's ordering uh, seems to be one almost every meet, which is cool. You know, consistent, consistent technical feedback is kind of the key to making big changes. So uh, if you're interested in a technical analysis of your own or any other coaching services, technical coaching, throws programming, lifting programming, whatever you need, I got you. Go check out www.gripandrip.co, all right? It's the place to go, all right? So uh, let's take a look at this and, and let's get into it. Um, this is a new PR for Evan, I believe. And uh, last last technical analysis, uh, his direction is looking better from last year. His patience is looking better here from last video. So uh, I think looking at it this time around, I think if you get the orbit a little bit more evened out, if you can get your posture a little bit better, because it looks a little bit heavy on that right side, that's why you kind of like fall back on that release so you need to get your right hip under a little bit more underneath you and level out that orbit a little bit so excuse me let's uh let's break it down a little bit and and help you fix that so that we can get up over 50 meters um the winds still look good you're turning back really well you're nice and balanced and stable uh flowing with it pretty well turning back pretty well as you come through on entry like i said last time you had the, the tendency to kind of uh Force the hands a little bit and lead with the left side a little bit. And this is a little bit better, but there's still a little bit of that. It looks like the forcing of the hands, as you can see, same thing. Shoulders, hands, you have this nice uh, triangle here, but then the ball is back behind you. Um, it's not going to be perfectly out in front of you. It will be slightly behind you. But um, I think if you just had a little bit more rhythm, let's say, perhaps, to, uh, to the wine. So let me just watch that one more time. Yeah. Um, so just a little bit more rhythm in the wind. So think slow first wind and then strong second wind. Not necessarily fast, but strong. Arms out away from the body. You're doing a good job of that. But just try to feel the hammer go out around behind you a little bit more. So like first wind, right through here, you feel the hammer go back behind you. Strong around to the right. And then strong out to the right, strong out forward. And then from here, just kind of chill out. Once the hammer passes 270, just chill out and let the hammer get ahead of you. All right, you can see the hands. And so this is that disconnection I'm talking about where you're kind of forcing the hands across. The ball's a little bit behind. You're not quite connected with it. Got to let the hammer chill and get a little bit more ahead. Your right elbow is a little bit straighter, which is better. Um, you're, there's a little bit of chest rising up here, as you can see. Chest comes up, shoulders come up just a little bit, and you rise up a little bit because of it as well. You can see your hip height, boom rise up just a bit and that's going to cause you to lose a little bit of tension so uh, perhaps what you should think about is around the left side drop this left side down into the next turn so kind of fall backwards away from the hammer push off this heel drop this left knee down spiral it down open towards 180 and forwards and then that'll help you land with the hips a little bit more underneath you and uh, a little bit better posture as you can see you're catching with the hammer kind of down a little bit late, not a little bit late, but it's, it's just not as ideal as it could be. Um, your hips just need to be more underneath. You need to land with your right hip underneath you. As you can see, it's just a little bit back. All right. And then from there, it's the same thing as in the entry. You need to just wait for the hammer. And I know we kind of talked about this last turn and or last, last, uh, last time around, but, uh, that left heel comes down and then you can see this left side still opening up a little bit early and you can see the disconnection the right leg is back disconnected from the rest of the throw it's giving you some stability and some support there but you need to get this right knee kind of turning with everything else all right you need to work this hip up into the throw you need to feel that right hip work in the throw um, instead of the left shoulder like i said you can see this left shoulder and the left shoulder is down which is good like i said so this is more of that kind of left leg spiral you need in the previous turn, but then now your right leg's a little disconnected. And then you get a little butt kick here, heel towards the butt, all right? And then from here, I need to see you drive your hip a little bit forwards, drop that left knee down, drive the hip, right hip forwards towards the high point. So you can see the left leg is a little bit straight here, so that's gonna cause you to rise up and then kind of crash a little bit on this next catch. And since the right leg isn't quite connected with you, you catch, there's not a lot of tension there, so you're going to see this right foot kind of collapse down towards the ground. And then uh, you land kind of flat-footed, and that's not the most ideal thing, I'd say. 
because then you're going to see that right foot kind of pause even more. You see, so if you caught with a more active right side, if you were landing on the ball of the foot with a stiffer ankle, kept this knee bent, you know, it looks like your hips are pretty much underneath you. It's hard to tell from this angle exactly, but if you had a more active right side, you'd stabilize this left side a little bit better. You're, it's going to be easier to be more patient. If your body doesn't feel stable, you're not going to feel patient. So um, you're going to have to rush to create tension with that left side again. You're pulling back a lot here. Right leg is out from underneath you. Or not out from underneath you. Your right leg is underneath you. You're back over this right side a lot. But then the orbit gets a little steep on you. And you, there's not really any direction backwards. So if you catch with a more stable right leg, you can work backwards to 180 instead of backwards towards this left sector line. So you need to go backwards in the direction of the sector. Patient left shoulder stays down. As you can see, now it starts to rise up because it is creating more of the tension. Left leg straightening out. Got to drop this left knee a little bit down towards the ground. Downward spiral. Keep that left shoulder down. You catch. And then this catch position, I think, is more ideal, as you can see on the ball of the foot a little bit more, but then the problem is you're just a little bit too far forward. You're getting pulled forwards a little bit because you're so off balance because his left side is on top rather than the right side on top. So the left side pulls around. You're going to be too forwards. There's a side view. You'd see that you're leaning very much too far forwards towards the back of the circle. You catch chest is a little bit forwards, and then you have to do what you can to fight out of it. But this heavy right leg, or heavy on the right leg, it's hard to fight out of that. So this left side pulls even more. You can see the right side breaks even more. Your toe and ankle is not connected to the knee, which is not connected to the hip. So you're really just kind of pulling this left side to get through the finish. So there's a uh, there's a lot of direction still to be found in this throw, probably at least a few meters, if you can line it up right and really get through a good finish. Um, so, yeah, dude, it, it is an improvement from last time, which is good, but we need to keep doing more of the same. Like I said, it's... Uh, once you you would just want to throw the ball forwards on on entry, throw it forwards, throw it forwards towards zero, not around towards zero, forwards from 270. Um, let the hammer build tension on its own, and then you just need to keep that direction backwards, working that right leg, working that right hip, and then uh, staying patient, keeping that stiffer right leg, keeping that left side down, limiting that left side tension. Like I said, that all comes down to patience. All right, if you're patient enough. You won't pull with the left side. If you don't pull with the left side and you're patient enough, you'll feel the right side working better and then you'll have much better direction and stability and tension. All right, the ball should be doing all the work, not you, okay? So you just got to set it up and let the ball do the rest. That's all it is. So, all right, Evan and David, his father, let me know if you guys have any questions. Hopefully this helps. All right. Like I said, if any questions, just don't be afraid to ask. If anybody else out there would like a technical analysis or any other coaching, go to www.gripandrip.co, all right? Go sign up. Now's the time. It's April 12th. Championship season is just a few weeks away. All right, so let's, let's get to it. Let's get to work, all right? Until next time, Sean Don signing off.